Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of of this maintenance database management that was built with Access, Access Database, Microsoft Access Database. So this database primarily is for scheduling preventive maintenance, reactive maintenance, work order, lockout, tagout, and keeping track of your inventory. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to schedule a weekly maintenance so we're going to go through how to schedule weekly maintenance and how to set up notification so we have two forms of notification we have email notification and we have a status object notification the status object notification is shown on a dashboard that i'm going to review here real quick um, so right now we are on the main menu so if we want to schedule weekly maintenance we just have to go here click on preventive maintenance and here it shows us a dashboard of where we could schedule bi-weekly, weekly, monthly, quarterly, bi-yearly, yearly. And this is where you could uh, look up the ones that are complete and the one that hasn't been completed. And this right here is where you look up everything. So there are two ways to schedule a weekly, a, a basically a, a maintenance. So uh, you could either use this to schedule the weekly maintenance or or you can use the show or record. They do the same thing except for this one narrows down the options. So this only shows you the uh, maintenance that is due within 30 days. And it does the same for bi-weekly as well. And monthly it shows you uh, once the uh, PM that is due within two weeks. And quarterly, it gives you PM that's due within 45 days. And yearly, it gets, shows you PM that's due in one month and two months. And uh, yearly maintenance, it shows you about 45 days. PM that's due 45 days. But if you want to go here, and, and, and it also gives you a status here. You guys will notice that after I schedule uh, a PM, it will tell you, Right, it will sh show you here if it's due within the certain amount of days that I just stated. But if you go through this option, you can see everything. Um, PM that was done 10 years ago, five years ago, or whenever, whenever you want. So we're gonna go ahead and, and schedule a weekly maintenance. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, click this button and automatically displays this page where I fill out the information of the equipment. So if you notice, it has a 30 asterisks, one, two, three. So in order for this to get be completed, this asterisk has to be shown. So if you didn't fill out, if you forget to fill out any of this option, it will notify you. So it will give you a, a kind of a reminder. So let's go ahead and pull this drop down box to find the equipment that we want to schedule a PM for. So we're just going to use uh, the adhesive flip table. So once we click that, it auto populates the serial number and the production area, which is where the uh, equipment is located. So this information has already been imputed, imputed previously. That's why I have it available. And the next option is to go to the PM description. Uh, this information has been pre-uploaded to the database as well. I mean, you can do it yourself, and I'm going to show you how to do it in upcoming videos. So if you have the uh, technician name, this is where you put the drop-down box, and it automatically gives, it, gives that to you. So if you have a service company that is coming in to perform the weekly maintenance, uh, they will be over here, and you can just pick whatever one. And this is where you write your notes test, maybe repair notes or reminder notes or whatever information that you want your company or your technician to be able to remember. This is where you put it. The next option, you have a how-to. So a lot of time you have uh, procedures on how to perform a, 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 a weekly maintenance or a maintenance in general. So this is where you put in a link. So you go here and click, do a right click and Put in a hyperlink so you just put in a pdf file or a video um let me go ahead and put in a pdf file here let me look for a pdf file yeah right here 
Just put in a PDF file. The link is right there. Just a reminder that if you're using a share uh, network, you have to go through the share network to put in the link. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. You can't just put in the link from uh, files on your personal C drive, your computer. So you want to put in something that's on the share drive so uh, other users on this database would have access to it from their own computers. Okay, so the next option is uh, the next op the next thing we want to look at is the part number. So, in order to perform uh, PM, there are some parts that are used regularly. So, if you have the part in the database, you could just uh, it will populate here, and as you can see, the cost is also as the cost is also here. So after you're done filling the part, putting in the part, as you can see, the cost is all in here. And let me just change it to something else. So they all look different. So as you can see, it gives you the cost and this is the quantity. So the reason why I have this here, added this here, so you can calculate the amount of the cost of performing a maintenance and you can see the time spent is the time it takes the uh, maintenance guy to perform the maintenance if you put two hours here uh, and the rate is set to thirty dollars by default but you can come in here and put whatever rate you want and it calculates the part uh, the total part, that, the cost of the part that's used, and also it calculates the time it takes the uh, technician to finish the operation. So in this next box, this is the last update user. So what this does is it gives, um, it, it puts the information of the username of whoever is using the computer at that moment. So the reason why it's there is so that whoever put in this information, we know who added the PM or who completed the PM. So that's why that's this is there. You can't really use, uh, it won't allow you to put any um, input on this done automatically. So once I click out of out of the box, it populates this. So once I, 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 I go somewhere else, maybe I go to the next screen. As you can see, it's giving me this error message because I haven't filled out this asterisk. But what I was trying to do is to auto-populate this. So as you can see, it automatically auto-populates that option here. And so let's just go ahead and complete this. So uh, we, what this is, is, is this is telling us that we have to fill this out in order for the reminders to work. So we have two forms of reminders. The first reminder is by email. So the email reminder is sent out three days before the PM is due. And the next reminder is sort of a visual reminder that's located on the dash dashboard. So just notice that this is saying no weekly PM due. But after we're done scheduling the PM, you will see this change. So just take a note of that. So let's go ahead and complete the PM. So we know that today's date is the 27th. However, we want to see the, the reminders work. So we're going to assume that the last day that we completed this PM, just mind you, it's the first time we're doing this, we're scheduling this, but we're going to assume that in order to schedule a PM, that a PM has already been done on it. So the database we calculate from the time the previous PM was done. So let's say your PM was done on the uh, 22nd. What it does is auto populates the due dates once you come down here and click the due dates. So what it does is just calculate seven days. So it calculates seven days and and as you know, today's date is the 27th. So we have two days left. So there should be an email reminder and a status box, 
uh, the status on the update on the dashboard that's telling us that we have a PM that's about to be due. So uh, that's it. Uh, we we're not gonna click this because we haven't completed the PM. We we just scheduling it, and we don't want to check this box here. We, if you check this box here, what will happen is it automatically takes this information and schedule another PM for you. So I just want you guys also to, to notice this uh, this record navigation. It says one of one. So if we want to go to the next PM, all we need to do is just, if we want to schedule the next PM, all we need to do is just click this right here. But we don't want to do that right now. We want to see how the email notification works and how the status uh, dashboard notification works as well. So we come here and click save and close. Just so you know, uh, Access Database uh, usually save save uh, whatever you put in once you put it in. You don't really need to click the save and close. You can just close it right here. But just for formality, I added this button here so you can save and close. So as you notice, there's no changes on this status bar. What happened is it hasn't refreshed yet. So if you close this form, just so you allow it to refresh, close this form, brings you back to the main menu. When you click the main menu, see what happens. It says, it says you have one weekly PM due. So this timer here, in five seconds, I'm supposed to receive an email that tells me that I have a PM that's due within three days. So this we're gonna just go ahead and work, but this email will be sent to my to the email that I have on file. Look at it. It, it just I just received an email due um, PM due in three days. When I click on it, so it gives us the equipment, the tax description, the PM due date. So that's the, the two notification, the email notification and the dashboard notification. So our next step is we want to act like the, the weekly maintenance, uh, this weekly schedule maintenance has been complete. So we're going to go in and click complete and see what happens to our, our status, the status on the dashboard. So when we click it, and then we click complete. We save and close. And then we close this form so it allows the form to refresh. And then we'll go back. We see when we click complete, now we have no weekly PM due. So we have no weekly PM due now. And then when we come back in the maintenance, we still see this. Uh, the record is still there and it doesn't fall off. The reason why it doesn't fall off yet is because we haven't passed the 29 date. So it remains, the record remains there till we pass this 729 date. So when you pass this 729 date, the only way that we ha will have access to that record is either we go to the show or weekly records which gives us every uh, record that's been scheduled. As you can see, the navigation is saying that we have about 20 records here. So this gives you the ones that's been completed and the one that hasn't been completed. Well, that's it for this one. And the, this, this button right here allows you the option to check a box to show you the one that's been completed and the one that hasn't been completed. So as you can see, this is the one that hasn't been completed and this is the one that's been completed. So if you want to export this to uh, an Excel spreadsheet, you can just go in here and click Excel data and it tells you the location where your document is saved. And you click OK. 
So it's telling me that I already have a record by that name. So do you want to replace the existing file? I say, I'll go yes. So close. Let's go ahead and check out. So yeah, so this is the information. So that's how you can export it to a cell spreadsheet if you want to. Okay, uh, uh, that's, so just to, to give you a rundown, this, this one gives you information within the specify uh, status date for weekly maintenance, uh, it's two days. I believe the bi-weekly is two days. The monthly is about two weeks, I think. It's two weeks or seven days. The quarterly is uh, about 45 days. The bi-yearly uh, bi is a month, either a month or 45 days. And the yearly is a month. So that's how long it stays here before it drops off. But if you want to access all the records, you still have this options right here. All right, guys. Thank you very much for hanging around. Oh, have a good day.